Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Kölling. Welcome to another one of the Greenfoot video tutorials. Today I will talk about shooting. I uh, get asked quite regularly how to implement shooting in Greenfoot games and so today I thought I'll talk about that for a bit. So what I'm going to do is I will implement a simple catch-up cannon. Uh, I have started by making three pictures and that you can see them here on the screen. I have used Photoshop but uh, you can use any graphics program that you like. I have made a cannon and I've just very quickly drawn them by hand um, so it's nothing very really fancy. I have a cannon picture here and a blob that's a blob of ketchup that gets shot out of the cannon and then I have a image here that I'm named splat that I will use when my ketchup blob um, hits something. So these three pictures I have just made and I have saved them as PNGs, that is in PNG format. Um, I have them here in a folder called Ketchup Images. Okay, and now I'll show you how to use Greenfoot to implement the behavior of our Ketchup Cannon. Let's open Greenfoot. I have Greenfoot here and I will start really from scratch no code prepared, um, just the images that I've just shown you. So I start by making a new scenario, I'm calling it catch-up, um, putting it in here and create it. And I'll get here on screen a window for my new scenario with the world and actor superclasses. I'll start off by making a new subclass for the world and I call it my world it doesn't need an image, that's okay. As soon as I compile, I get an empty world here that I can use. Now, I start off by making the three actors for the three images that I have. So, an actor subclass, my first actor subclass is Canon, and I import my image file. I have on my desktop my catch-up images. There's my Canon image. I select that one as the image for my Canon. Um, there's my cannon here. I create another s new subclass and let's just call it blob for my blob of ketchup. I import that again from the file on my desktop in the same directory. There's my blob image. Okay, and I create a new subclass which I call splat. And again, same location. There is also my splat image. So if I compile this, I get my world. All these three classes have no code in them, but they compile, so I can now put my cannon in here. Um, and the idea is um, that when I shoot, that I get a blob object somewhere appearing here, and that blob object should then fly out and then eventually turn into a splat image. So I want to make it so that I can rotate the cannon shoot out a blob of ketchup and have it splat on the screen here. That's the goal. So first, if I reset this, let me put the cannon and I want, when my scenario starts, I want the cannon to already be there. So first I put a cannon in where I want it and I just save this as the starting state by clicking on the world background and saying save the world. This will write my prepare method here in the world constructor automatically that has just generated this code for me that creates the cannon and puts it into the world. So now if I recompile the cannon will appear. When I run this scenario of course nothing happens. So let's get started. Open the cannon code and the first thing that I want to do is I want to make the cannon rotate when I press my left or right arrow key. So I use something like if greenfoot dot is and then if I click control space I get my code completion here is key down um, so I can quickly uh, use look up and insert the method name um, so I say if my left key is being pressed then I want to um, set my current rotation um, to get rotation uh, minus 5, that is I want to subtract 5 degrees from my current rotation. And if I duplicate this here, I just select it and copy, um, 
Now if I paste it in here and say do it for the other value as well, if I say if I press my right key, I set my rotation to my current rotation plus five. So if I try this out, I compile this now. Oops, I'm getting a compiler error. It tells me here, if you see that at the bottom of the screen, parentheses expected. Um I forgot on bracket here, so let's try that again. Compile this again. And of course, because I copy and pasted it, I've got the same error twice. Let's compile again. And I've got another error. Um, set row, oh, that's a spelling error. Rotation, and again, copy and paste, same error twice. Let's try that out again. Compile this, yes, that's compiled. Fine, let's compile the rest of it. Here is my um, scenario running now. If I run it now, and on my keyboard now, I press my left and right arrow keys. I can rotate my cannon. Okay, that's fine. Cannon rotates. Next thing we want to do is fire a blob of ketchup out of my ketchup cannon. So here, uh, we can start off by just copying this again and say, okay, if I press the space bar, so if key down space, then I don't want to rotate. I get that out. I want to fire. Okay, and now may I ask where does the fire method come from? If I compile that now, it will tell me actually the fire method doesn't exist because it really doesn't exist. That's something I just made up. So I now have to implement here the fire method. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm saying private void fire, no parameters. And I can start with an empty body. So here's my fire method. This should compile now. Um, of course, it doesn't do anything because my fire method is empty. But if I press the spacebar, this method will get called. So the question is, how do we now fire a blob of ketchup? It's actually quite easy. We just insert a ketchup blob into the world at the location of the cannon. So firstly, we have to create the ketchup blob. Um, so I say new blob. That's the here, remember, blob is the name of my blob of ketchup. So um, this blob, when we create it, this will create a new blob. We have to do something with it. Let's store it into a local variable first. So I create here a local variable called blob in lowercase, of type blob, and put my new blob object into it. Next thing is I want to put this into the world. So I say get world dot add object. So I can add an object to the into the world. Um, the object I want to add is my blob and then the x and y coordinates. Here I just get the current coordinate of the cannon, um, the x and y coordinates, and that is the location where I put the blob. So the blob will appear at the same location as the cannon. Let's try that out. So I compile this, run it, can rotate and now I press the spacebar and there's a blob appearing here and every time I press the spacebar now there's no visible effect but if you look at it there's now actually many blobs lying all on top of each other here. Okay that's a start. So we can put a blob into the world. Next thing is we want to make that blob um, move forward. The challenge is really that we want to make the blob move forward in the direction that the cannon is facing. Now Greenfoot has no built-in method that moves an object into the direction it is facing at the moment. So we want to, we, we need a move method that takes sort of the current angle of rotation into account. We don't actually have to write that ourselves because Greenfoot has some helper methods, uh, or sorry, helper classes that we can use. Um, let me show you here um, the Greenfoot website. So we go to the Greenfoot website. In this section for programmers, there is a section with support classes. In the support classes, there's a class called Mover. Mover is a class that adds relative move and turn methods for actors. So that means um, it, will, it has a move method that moves um, taking the current rotation into account. So this mover class I want to use in my project. The easiest way to do that is just to here create 
a class with the right name so I call it mover exactly the name that I've seen here um, and I open it and I delete all the code from it um, because I can now go to the website here click on my mover class and that gives me the whole source code for the mover class so I just select it all copy it um, and then in my mover class here paste it all in so here I have my mover class I can now I don't really need to read the whole source code because I don't want to modify it. I can change it to the documentation view and that shows me that these are the methods that are available in the mover class. And the interesting one that I need is a method called move with a distance parameter. I can specify how far I want to move. And it says moves in the, speci the specified distance in the current direction. That's the important bit. The distance is a double, so it has a decimal point. We need to remember that. So now, if I go to the blob, every time um, the blob acts, it should move forward so that the cannon does nothing other than inserting the blob into the world and then the blob by itself should move forward. So here, we just add move and then say 10.0 pixels. Remember the distance was a double, so it needs the point zero point, otherwise it is not a double. Um, then we would have an int. So if now the um, every time the blob acts it moves forward, let's try that out. Um, oh, I'm getting a... oh, I forgot one step. It tells me here that it can't find the move method and that is because my blob actually um, doesn't know the mover class. I need to make now my blob a subclass of the mover class. So instead of saying that this extends actor, I say that this extends mover and now, if I compile this all, it will show now that blob is a subclass of mover, and so it has the move method available. Now if I run this, and I press my spacebar, there are blobs appearing, and they move forward. 